Okay, I've been driving myself crazy trying to find a way to start this video. Um, I just want to talk about my favorite games of 2021, uh, specifically my top 10. So I'm just going to get right into it, starting with number 10. For number 10, I'm going to go with Psychonauts 2. It was a really fun third-person platforming game. The world really captivated me right from the beginning. The each new mind that you jump into felt distinct from the last although at times some levels could be a little long uh, i'm looking at the one with all the bright colors and you're getting the band back together uh the mystery is what really made me keep playing through the game combat was pretty average i can't really remember the music but there's definitely a reason there was a sequel to this game and that's why it's coming in at number 10. Coming in at number 9 is Pokemon Unite, which I have to say is probably the most surprising thing to me, and probably you guys, but man, I was really nervous about Tencent getting ownership of this IP, but man, is it fun for me. I haven't been able to play games with someone in so long on a very basic level, and I just love MOBAs and Pokemon. And it just felt like a really good package. I know there was the pay to not win, but you know, be better and have an advantage at the beginning. But even to this day, I'll still go in and play for a match or two and they're constantly adding new Pokemon, tons of events. And as long as you're not dropping $20 on a skin, there's a lot to enjoy here. And that's why it's coming in at number nine. Coming in at number 8 is uh, Mario Party Superstars. I have to say this is probably the best return to form I've seen all year. Given it's just a remake and compilation of the original Mario Party on the Nintendo 64. But they gave us, well, 100 minigames through all the series. Gave us really good online play. They got rid of the character customization dice from Super Mario Party, which I personally was a fan of, but I get it. And, sure, they should have added more boards, but you can't be too mad. It's a good looking game with good online, and it's just a good time to have with friends. Or randoms. And for that reason, it's gonna get number 8 on this list. Coming in at number 7 is Halo Infinite, the multiplayer specifically. I haven't been able to play the campaign, so I don't want to put my opinions on that. So. Why is it at number 7 and it's just the multiplayer? It's because it runs so good. The combat is so nice. It's not going to get any higher than number 7 on this list because there's no forge mode yet and there's really not a lot of customization options. It feels very bare bones at the moment. Even with you buying customization options, it feels like they're really trying to get a lot of money out of me. So all that to the side, just looking at the gameplay and the visuals, it's a fun time, man, and I'm, I'm happy to, and I look forward to the future that they're going to do with the multiplayer specifically. So for that reason, I do believe Halo Infinite deserves a spot on this list. There's no higher than number seven. Coming in at number six is Death's Door, and let me tell you, this was a hidden gem until literally a week ago for me. I just 99% of the game and... Let me tell you, it's it's a fun ride, it keeps you attached, and it doesn't stay its welcome for too long. It's a very short game, but it's so good. The visuals are amazing. The storytelling is kind of funny. I'm not a big dialogue guy, but some of the dialogue got me to chuckle here and there. The combat is very fluid. If you like Hades combat, you're going to love it. It has some hints of Zelda dungeon-y things going on. And there's a little bit of an upgrade system. All in all, I loved it. I wish there was more. It, and it ties to other things I don't want to spoil. Please, please, if you get a chance, go check this game out. Death Door is not going to disappoint. There's a reason it's beating these other games on this list. And it's taking the spot in number six. All right, coming in at number five, we're in the top half of the list, and I'm gonna be real with you. I forgot this game released this year, but Spider-Man Miles Morales. 
Oh, baby, dude. I forgot, and I just, I'm gonna gush about it. I'm gonna gush about it for a few minutes here. The combat, amazing. He plays different than Peter Parker in the first Spider-Man. The, the exploration, the suits, the dialogue, the story that's told, it's so good. I know I'm biased because I'm a big Spider-Man fan, but please, go play this. I know there was like debates about it being like DLC, and yes, it does feel a little short, which is why it's not high on the list, but you won't be disappointed. There's plenty to do. He, the animations for him are impeccable. And just all around, it's a good time. It, you get, he gets to experience his own story. He's not carried by Peter Parker. They did him justice in this game. If you haven't played it yet, I don't care if you have a PlayStation 4 or a PS5, go try it, especially before Spider-Man 2 comes out. It deserves at least number five on this list. Coming in at number four is Metroid Red, and what a way to revive a franchise. To bring it back, show them what Metroid's all about, why it defined a genre alongside Castlevania. They did this game justice. The exploration is nice, the controls are tight, you feel like you're constantly in control of Samus. Visuals could be a little bit better, music is mostly atmospheric, but there's a reason this got game of the year. The boss fights felt like boss fights. They were actually hard. The ending, without spoiling anything, is crazy. And it it's interesting and it makes my mind go crazy as to see where this franchise is gonna go. And just leaves me with so much excitement for Metroid Prime 4. For that reason, for all those positives, go buy this game. And for all those positives, that's why it's at number four. Coming in at number three, you know I had to put a fighting game on this list somewhere, boys, and Melty Blood Type Lumina was not gonna make it. I'm sorry, honorable mention. Guilty Gear Strive, dude! Oh my god, this pioneered rollback, in my opinion, and is just the messiah of good things for this year, fighting game-wise. The combat, I know people are mad about the Gatling system, but they're reworking it. There's constant patches. The game's gorgeous. So good. Arxis knows what they're doing, man. I have almost zero complaints. I do like myself the 3v3 anime fighters, but this game... Woo! It's good. Personally, I feel like even with the base roster, there was still a character for anyone. The introduction of Nago and uh, Giovanna made me really happy hopefully made others really happy i know some legacy characters weren't in yet and i know we're getting them in dlc which is uh you know people can be a little hit or miss on that but this game's still gonna grow but i'm trying to rank it just off of what we got on this year i can't count biking on unfortunately i know she's coming out this month but please if you're interested in fighting games and you haven't tried this yet please for the love of god go buy this game it's fantastic. You won't be disappointed, I promise. And that's why it's coming in at number three. Coming in at number two has to be the most out of left field game I've ever seen. It wasn't on my radar at all until I saw, I believe it was a direct of some sort. It's Inscription. This game is a wild ride in every sense of the word. It's part horror, part card building, part adventure game it just keeps doing all these different things and they do it well the game is just it it hooked me from the beginning and i just could not stop streaming it i had to play the entire thing to its fullest and i still have no idea what's going on i don't want to spoil a single thing about this game it's one you just need to jump in experience the whole thing for yourself and if you go in without having any idea what's happening, you're gonna love it. I guarantee you it's probably gonna be in your top 10 as well, if that's like your thing. So please, if you were on the fence about this game specifically, check it out. I, I don't wanna say too much. That's why I'm gonna keep it nice, short, and sweet. But it truly, truly deserves a slot and the spot 
at number two. And finally, coming in at number one is Monster Hunter Rise. I gotta say, I gotta be honest with you right out the beginning, I played Monster Hunter World and I wasn't too, like, fascinated with it. I, I wasn't good at it. I I got carried in every single mission, but when Monster Hunter Rise came out, I said, I'm gonna try this one more time. I'll give this series one more shot. And dude, did it deliver. <laughs> it really delivered, man. I had so much fun actually customizing my character, the Palamute travel, the wire bug system is phenomenal. Why that wasn't in another game that I'm aware of is, is out of my mind. I know Monster Hunter veterans are probably a little like, wow, number one, why is this at number one? It doesn't have a lot of content compared to other Monster Hunters. And for you guys, I, I can't even disagree. Like I said, I didn't play a lot of those games, but for this one, I got my money's worth tenfold. I went on missions with people in my stream chat, on online being carried by people with the craziest builds. It was just fun. And they gave, they kind of drip fed us some new monsters, some new missions. Do I hope there was more? Yes. But did I enjoy all of my time that I sunk into this game? A hundred percent, I didn't regret a single minute of it. Am I waiting for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak? You know it, dude. Are you serious? If I could probably add a DLC to it, if I could if I could just add that to this, it would solidify number one without a doubt in my mind. But even without that DLC, this game deserves my game of the year. I just want to say thank you for watching the video. 2021 was a long, crazy year. I look forward to producing more content. Let me know what you guys would change on this list. What was your top game of the year? Let me know. But seriously, thanks for everything. Please consider subscribing. I'm trying to hit a thousand by the end of this year. But seriously, thank you. Enjoy yourself. Stay safe. And here's to a great 2022.